female friend of mine once said to me, if you don't have children, then what is the point of it all? What is the meaning of life? And I thought that was so interesting because I have the complete opposite point of view. I have never connected the meaning of my existence with propagating the species or continuing my genetics or continuing my name. And this issue of the essential meaning of life and children is handled in such a powerful and sensitive way in this short novel, Boulder, by Eva Baltazar. And I feel really lucky in a lot of ways that my husband and I have always been in complete agreement that we never want to have children. But I know it's a difficult issue in a lot of couples' lives uh, when they might be struggling to conceive children, when, when they want to have them, or there might be a disagreement when one partner wants to have a child and the other one doesn't. And that is the case with the protagonist of this novel, Boulder, and her partner, Samza. Because the narrator had previously been living an isolated life, working on a merchant ship, Samza nicknames her partner, Boulder, uh, like those large solitary rocks in southern Patagonia, pieces of world left over after creation. When Samza is offered a good job in Reykjavik, Boulder is persuaded to abandon her nomadic lifestyle and settle down. And after several years, Samza really wants to have a child and Boulder hesitantly agrees. So this novel follows the complications that this causes in their relationship while also raising these larger issues to do with the, the meaning of life and procreation. And it is written in this poetic and briskly engaging style that's full of verve and insights. It's interesting how Boulder's philosophy of life is disrupted by the challenges of partnership and parenthood, because for most people, settling down is a stage which naturally follows on from a rootless existence. But she believes that the destination always kills the journey. And if we have to reduce life to a story, it can only be a bad one. And equally, she shuns any attachments, believing, I can give anything up because nothing is essential when you refuse to imprison life in a narrative. This ethos is absolutely contrary to what mainstream society promulgates concerning matters of a stable job and uh, finding a life partner and starting a family. So it's striking how Boulder feels irresistibly drawn towards Samza and their bond challenges her essential nature. This is described in deeply evocative prose. The intense heat of Samza's body is rhythmic. It reaches my skin in waves that wash over me the way a murmuring tide washes over a lone rock, bringing in something new each time, a tale of shipwreck, a ship buried in the sand, calm and quiet at the bottom of the sea. I admire the rich descriptions which not only invoke the heat of their connection, but the gradual shift in Boulder's psychology. The metaphor inherent in Boulder's nickname is worked into the texture of this book. She doesn't feel connected to the story of our species, so becoming a mother and entering into that narrative is deeply uncomfortable for her. This isn't just a queer perspective because clearly Samza feels differently and I know lots of queer people that either have children or want to have children. Um, it's just not an urge that I naturally feel and it's not one that Boulder naturally feels. However, I feel like it's a sense that many queer people can strongly relate to since we often feel feel ostracized from the values of larger society. And certainly, many heterosexual people can feel the same. There's an interesting section where she goes to a museum and she remarks, I'm not interested in these sculptures, nude, still, deliberately feminine, rested with every strike of the mallet from slabs of granite, 
from rocks that had once held meaning under the stars. For her, propagating the species takes away from the inherent value of life for life's sake. She didn't ask to be created, she simply exists and doesn't feel obligated to ensure that anyone will continue on from her. Also, as with many couples who become parents, her emotional and physical relationship with her partner dramatically changes once they have a child, and the growing distance between them is palpable. I found it very moving how the storyline evokes gradual but seismic shifts which occur between them and within Boulder herself over a long period of time. It takes a lot of skill to convey immense and complicated feelings through such economical prose. While the ideas in this book might seem weighty, I think there's also a wonderful lightness in this story which is conveyed in the feverish desires which take hold of Boulder, but also in the humor in the friendship she finds with her drinking partner Ragnar, who had many wives and children. Wife number three had amazing tits, creamy as skier, he says. The man's a poet, Boulder Riley comments. I found this description which invokes skier, it's just so funny, and in case you didn't know, skier is Iceland's uh, famous yogurt-like product. And maybe I also strongly connected with this short, impressive novel because I feel so sympathetic towards Boulder's point of view. However, I don't think it's dogmatic in its message, instead it offers an alternative perspective to the idea that existence only has meaning if you have children. It poignantly opens up a conversation about having children as well as the nature of life and how it should be lived. So those are some of my thoughts uh, about Boulder. I really enjoyed this book and I would love to hear in the comments below uh, if you've also read it, um, what you think about uh, this book or if you're interested in reading this novel now, uh, or if you want to discuss any of the, the issues that I've, I've raised in this video. Uh, but this is also long listed uh, for this year's International Booker Prize. Um, so I went on the Booker Prize website where all the judges have given comments about the books which have been listed um, this year. So I'm going to read out what the judges said about this novel, um, and they comment that Boulder is a sensuous, sexy, intense book. Baltazar condenses the sensations and experiences of a dozen more ordinary novels into just over 100 pages of exhilarating prose, an incisive story of queer love and motherhood that slices open the dilemmas of exchanging independence for intimacy. And yeah, that it is such a great way to put it. Yeah, it is so impressive and how short this book is, but yeah, how it tells an entire life story and the story of a couple, I, I feel. Um, it is really impressively done, um, really skillful, and yeah, I, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, so thank you for watching my, my thoughts about this book and talking about this larger issue. I know it's a sensitive subject for um, a, a lot of people, but yeah, it's really opening up um, this interesting larger conversation, which I feel like we don't often f feel like brave enough to have or feel like we we can have openly because there is this this sense and this point of view that um, yeah, having children is always um, a good thing, but but not everybody feels that way. And I feel like uh, it's it's opening up this discussion, you know, rather than trying to limit it to just one point of view. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you're doing well, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.